Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I am so excited for all of you to hear about Taskmasters from the creator herself. Um, this is a program that we're super excited about, and we have already been implementing and been seeing some real progress and growth in the kids who are participating in it. So it's very exciting. Um, I personally, that I think I should sign up for Taskmasters. So, so very excited for you guys to hear more. Um, before we jump into that, we do have some community partners to thank. So the reason that these uh, have been free for us to be able to do, and also uh, why we're able to offer discounts uh, to folks who've signed up for various services that we provide post webinar, more on that in a second, um, is because of these amazing community partners who stepped up to help us make these happen. So um, to start with Goldfish Swim School, we are big fans of Goldfish Swim School. They are an indoor swim lesson facility in uh, Chapel Hill and Cary. We have been working with them on various projects here and there for the past few years, really. Um, they're run by a great family. They employ um, uh, a lot of high schoolers who have like their first job at Goldfish. And it's really gratifying to watch kids grow and learn and just like we get to do here. So they were a really natural community partner for us. And um, we're really thankful for their support. Um, next up is Holman Family Dental, another great community partner. We send referrals back and forth to treat families and kids um, and offer them the various support that they need. Um, they are located in Chapel Hill, and Shana Holman is um, a dentist there and also the owner. Um, raising a family, I think she has like four or five beautiful kids. Um, just a super smart, super supportive, super community-oriented person. So grateful for her support. Uh, Robbie Norris Farm Bureau is also based in Chapel Hill. Robbie has been a Farm Bureau agent in North Carolina for a very long time, um, helping families have uh, the support and guidance they need when it comes to various insurance products, um, deeply invested in the community and the families that make this community so special. Um, I think he just won his like best Farm Bureau agent, like the like 15th one in a row or something. So he's pretty famous around here and uh, we're very happy he is uh, on team Emerge to make things like this happen. And then finally, Chapel Hill Media Group, which is made up by 97.9 The Hill on your FM frequency and chapelboro.com. Chapelboro.com is this area's only source for daily local news. So they are reporting um, in, in our community on the things that matter, um, the things that are important to the people here. And when we came to them with this idea, they said, how can we help? How can we tell more people? How can we quite literally broadcast this out? So very grateful for um, their support and the support of all of our sponsors. Um, and one of the things that the sponsors have specifically provided to this opportunity is anyone who attends today or watches this webinar and ends up signing up for Taskmasters will actually receive a $50 discount um, on the program itself just for participating uh, in the webinar with us. And that is straight from these sponsors. So very grateful for them. I am going to get out of the way and let the <laughs> ultimate Taskmaster herself uh, take over. So Brittany. All right, thank you, Allie. All right, let me get this. There we go. Okay, so thank you for being here. So a little bit about me. Um, I am Brittany Winslow. I am an occupational therapist uh, by trade. I graduated from ECU with my master's in occupational therapy in 2011 and actually joined right on to the Emerge team. I did my field work here at Emerge and then I became a, a clinician at Emerge in early 2012 and then have worked my way through multiple roles in the company to now um, became the executive director in 2018 and then um, have continued that role and purchased the company in 2019. So I'm really passionate about the work we do outside of being an occupational therapist and being the executive director and owner of Emerge. I'm also a mom. Um, I'm a wife. Um, I'm involved in our North Carolina OT Association and areas where my kids get involved, like bouncing bulldogs in their elementary school. But also my kids have been clients of Emerge. So we've really been able to see um, it's really helped me to be a better clinician as well to really understand the process on the parent side. So we're going to go into um, a lot of information today about Taskmasters. We're going to talk about why it was created, who can benefit, why the program or how the program is individualized, and how Taskmasters can evolve with us. So when we're looking at how was our, like, how was this created? Like, what's the background for this? So for me, I do have three kids. Um, they're 
you know, a variety of different neurodiversities within my household. And so through doing that and also being a really busy mom running the business and trying to stay involved in all the things, I was realizing that I was carrying a lot of the mental load all of, all the time of who has soccer cleats, who forgot their glasses, who needs to take their medicine. Okay. So now we're at school and I'm, you know, getting messages from the school that we don't have this or that. And so I just realized I am one person and there are multiple people in this household. And I wanted my kids to really start build some more um, independence around the routines and take some more ownership over the routines and their daily activities, whatever they were involved in. So knowing that I could just go and find any sort of like checklist sort of system or write out their list, like all of that in theory could work for some kids. However, having a variety of neurodiversities within my household, I knew that I had to individualize how we were doing this. And so it couldn't be the same for my oldest to my middle to my youngest, because everyone is different in how they, um, how they, what they need, like how their process, like all the things, right? Everyone is very different. So I realized I needed to adapt that. So I really took the needs, my own needs of having just, you know, too much mental load and wanting to share some of that, wanting to also make my daughters um, more independent in what they were doing and taking ownership of their routines and then combine that with my OT knowledge to really find something that worked really well for my household. So what we do with this is, it, this is, again, very different from just something you can go and print off of the internet for a checklist. So people who can benefit from taskmasters are going to be anything from caregivers who are also looking to decrease their mental load, like I was. And really, you know, any kid that can follow a simple set of steps or pictures or spoken instructions, there are ways that we will adapt this program to meet the needs of the kid. So if it's not a visual schedule, if that's not the way that they operate, then that is okay. And we can look at alternate ways to do that. The four sessions of this program are completely individualized and I can walk through roughly what those sessions look like. Um, but we have used this with kids as young as five. And then I see probably the quickest implementation and success when kids are around eight years old or older. So a huge variety of people that can benefit from Taskmasters. So let's really talk about why this program is different and how it's individualized. So I love this concept that all brains are beautiful. And I really believe that. And I believe that we have to tailor what we're doing using a strengths-based approach to make this work um, and to find the, the recipe for regulating everyone's body and mind is different. So when we're looking at a task-based program like this is, we need to figure out how to get from I wake up in the morning till I get to bed at night and I am taking charge of all the things that need to happen in between point A and point B. But it's so much more than just, I need to get up and brush my teeth and find my clothes and eat my breakfast and so on and so forth. There's so much more breaking down of that that happens. And in addition to that, every kid is going to need, um, every kid is going to need different things to regulate themselves, to have the best mental clarity, to um, have the best energy to be able to, to really show up and be able to handle these tasks. So we're looking at that from a sensory-based, a strengths-based approach to look at more than just what are the tasks that you need to do, but how is your energy levels during the day? So we typically spend that first session looking at, let's do a brain dump. Let's walk through what are your routines? I love hearing that from kids because often we will get such a basic sort of breakdown, right? Well, I get up and then I get ready and I go to school. We have to really break that down. And then we have to look at and plot throughout the course of a day. When do you feel like you're like kind of low arousal or not um, as able to follow a ten follow you know directions or you're losing focus and where are times where maybe you might be overwhelmed and so we start to learn how can we weave in not just the tasks that need to be done but are there things that we need to in integrate into a routine that is going to help to put them in the right regulation state the right mental state to be able to handle the tasks that they have on their plate so very individualized in that process. And sometimes that takes one or two sessions at the beginning to really get a good breakdown of that. Some kids are, if they've had, you know, any sort of background in OT before talking about kind of their regulation needs, they're usually able to kind of go through that a little bit quicker. So we are individualizing everything based on that particular person. 
And we have to individualize this based on the household and kind of the partners that are going to be working on this with the, with the child. So if the parents need, you know, if we set up something that works really well for that kid, but there's also other neurodiversities in the house that maybe with the adults in the house as well. And we need to really make sure that the systems work for everyone. We are going to bring that into the conversation and make sure that we're not setting up a system that only works for one person, but the partner helping them that it's it's not going to work for. So we have to, to really look at all those different mechanics. Ellie. Okay. <laughs> I sort of liken it to like when you hire a, a fitness coach or a running coach or somebody that is going to coach you on a thing, but also coaches you on the headspace to be ready to do that thing, right? So like when you work with a, a fitness coach or a running coach, they're not just telling you what happens when you get to the gym, right? They're telling you what needs to happen when you wake up in the morning, make sure this is the way that you're feeling. Are you, do you have the motivation? Have you fueled your body? Are you in the right headspace to really jump into the thing? So I, I it's so much to me, it's like mental fitness yeah. that like, it's not just you show up at the gym and you're immediately ready to like do the list of things that a personal trainer has come up with. It really started like when we woke up in the morning to make sure like my headspace is clear and I'm exactly in the position that I need to be to go accomplish this thing. Yes, that is so accurate. And when I've worked with some of the kids in this program, even just thinking about when we talked about fueling your body, that is something that we look at. If we have kids that wake up in the morning and they're like, I don't really like breakfast foods and I don't want to eat breakfast. I'm not interested in this. Can we look at other things? You don't have to eat breakfast for breakfast, right? You can eat like leftover pizza or some spaghetti or something that you do enjoy. But we do have to look at 100% the sensory component, the mental clarity, but also what are those basic needs that we need in order to have our bodies in the right place to be able to do the things that we need to do. Great point. All right, so how does this evolve? So we do have four sessions with taskmasters and we've built it that way because we are seeing that once the child gets to the fourth session, they really have what they need and they've shown in kind of this uh, back and forth process that we have that the, the system that we have put together collaboratively is working. And so we also need to really build this foundation for understanding that as we grow and evolve, our systems also need to grow and evolve. And so we're not only saying, hey, we're going to develop this system or this program for right now in your life. And then you're going to need to continue to do this, you know, all the time. Like, you know, you need someone to work you through this. We want to really empower the child, the caregiver to be able to know these are the components that go into it. These are the questions that we need to ask to set up a successful, you know, taskmasters program at home. And this is how we can evolve with this. As we get into different transitions throughout the year, different seasons, in my household, for instance, I have a couple kids that are transitioning out of soccer season. And during that time, we're going, our routines are going to look a little bit different because that's been a big part of our schedule recently. And we've had to do things to make sure we had the energy to be able to do that after a busy day of activities. So we're going to have to sit down and we're going to have to look at how to tweak this. We also need to be comfortable with the fact that we might start a program and we might realize in a couple of weeks, you know, this isn't actually playing out in the way that I thought it was going to. And maybe instead of doing this, I need to do that instead. So there's this flexibility process of we're going to start something, but this is not set in stone. This is not forever, not even for like two weeks. Sometimes we might need to tweak it. And the way that I work with families in this program is they have communication with me in between sessions. So if we start something, they get it going, and then they realize, hey, we've built this program, we have these principles at home that we're utilizing, but we just realized we need to like shift a lot of stuff around, and can you send us an updated copy? Or, hey, can you help us work through X, Y, or Z? We can have that open communication to make sure that it's actually being translated to home and it's actually working. So you're going to learn the process, you're going to figure out how to tweak the process, and you're going to be able to... these. Kids, particularly as they're a little bit older, are going to learn, okay, I'm going into a new routine, a new season. I need to tweak this based on the needs now and giving themselves that permission to make those changes. So if you're interested in these ideas and you want to start doing some things at home just based off of what you're learning today, a few things that I'd have you do first. So 
One, I would really have you start exploring the current routines within your house um, and other ones that can belong to other people. So in my household, using this for a lot of these examples, you know, looking at packing lunches for school or tidying up a bedroom, those did not have to be me. With my kids' ages, I have an almost 11-year-old, I have an 8-year-old, and I have a 5-year-old. My 11-year-old is neurodivergent. She has dyslexia and ADHD, and she's happy with me sharing that. She's a big advocate for helping other people to know um, and, you know, own their diagnoses and using that as a strength. So with that, I was able, like, to teach her, okay, this is what you need to do. Let's build this into this routine. Let's work through the process of packing a lunch. So now that's her responsibility. Um, she's packing the lunch. She's thinking about what she needs and all the steps that come with that. So, you know, as she's running out of the last few pieces of turkey, what does that mean? You know, what do we need to do to really be truly independent here and make sure that turkey gets onto the grocery list for the next week? So depending on the kid, their motivation, their desire to have a lot of independence, you can really start to see at what entry point are we going to do and how are we going, what kind of level of independence are we going to help with? But think through some of the things that you're doing that you could, it would be nice, like a wouldn't it be nice if my kids packed their own lunches? Wouldn't it be nice if my kids could tidy up a bedroom? Um, start thinking through some of those areas. I also want you to think about this concept, which I really like to um fall back on a lot of the time is a place for everything and everything in its place. When we're thinking about some of the things in my household that I know that I am no, um, that is not unique to just my household was things like we're getting out the door, it's time to leave and no one can find their shoes, right? So shoes in our house has a home. The shoes have a home, they go to their home, they stay in their home. There should never be any mystery about where the shoes are if the shoes are going to the home. So we want to start thinking about making sure that everything we have in our in our house, everything that we're using on a routine basis is going to have a home so that when it's time to go and capture that, whether it's the socks, the shoes, the water bottles, the lunch boxes, the soccer cleats, um, in our house, it's even, even evolved to we needed something more than just like a sock basket. We needed a soccer sock basket and we needed a general sock basket. So um, you start thinking through what would be if this was always in its place and we could just kind of like rinse and repeat and know where it was, how would this make this easier? Because as you start building those systems, then you have that kind of automatic rhythm for where those things are going to be. And you also want to start considering your own energy levels and regulation needs during the day and how that impacts your ability to complete routines. So once we start to really understand this from the perspective of ourselves, it can help us to better understand how this might be um, translated to your kids. So if you really sit and think and journal through it or doodle about it, whatever works best for you, think about when you start out your day, where are your energy levels? As you start to go throughout your day, what are some things that make you really anxious or really kind of frantic? And what are some other things that make you more low arousal and like starting to lose focus? So as you kind of start to plot that out, you might realize for me in particular, if I'm sitting at my computer for a long time and I haven't really moved my body, I know that I'm going to need to utilize even five or 10 minutes to go take a walk to really bring my regulation state to a place where I can finish out my workday strong. So when you start to think about that, our kids are no different. Our kids are going to have changes in their regulation states throughout the day. Knowing that is going to help you to better build your routines. Um, a practical example for this in our household is we generally have less time in the mornings because of how early my kids go to school to do things. Um, and, you know, some of my kids take a little longer to get going in the morning. So we're going to capitalize on that while we're going to really in the after school routine or in the pre-bed routine, we're going to do as much as we can as kind of a gift to our future selves to make sure that we're set up in the morning whenever our energy is a little bit lower. So that might mean we're going to um, make sure the clothes are picked out. We're going to make sure that maybe water bottles get refilled, whatever needs to happen at a place where we have better regulation um, states to be able to handle that within our neurodivergent household, that is going to serve us better in times where we have lower energy. So just a few ways you can translate that um, to your home environment. All right, so if you're interested in Taskmasters, again, it's a four session um, program. So we go ahead and we build those sessions out. Some families prefer to schedule them on a week to week basis, four weeks in a row. Um, some families like to do one or two sessions and then we take a little bit of a longer break to see really that 
giving um, the program some time to work at home, seeing how we might need to edit or adjust that program, and then we'll schedule another session. There's also the option to do virtual sessions. So some families might want to do a couple in person, and then we might do a virtual check-in to do any adjustments or things that need to be done. The beauty of this program is the, the implementation of the program is really flexible, and so is the way you can schedule it. So the practical piece is you're going to submit an initial inquiry on our website. You're going to select task masters. And when you select that, you're going to get connected with Allie, who's here um, with us today, to discuss your options. So there's a QR code on the screen here that will take you to filling out that initial inquiry form. And I'll let Allie wrap it up with our future schedule. Awesome. So <laughs> this has our uh, past and future schedule. I wanted to be sure that everyone saw the conversations that we've already had and what you um, have access to learning about. So obviously today is Halloween. Brittany is wearing her Kelly Kapowski costume in case you hadn't caught that. Um, so October 31st, that's where we are. So we have done as many as we have left. Um, next week, we'll be talking about feeding therapy uh, with Gwen, one of our therapists in our Carboro clinic. Um, and then the last two weeks, we'll both be with Laura. The first one is to talk about Emerge Clubs, which are right around the corner, which is extremely exciting. Um, and then our reading services uh, that we offer. So um, definitely recommend attending those as well. Brittany, thank you so much for your time and being this week's uh, presenter. I think Taskmasters is so amazing. And um, Brittany is, if, if you haven't figured this out, Brittany is the only person actually leading these sessions right now. So um, it's a very cool opportunity to get in with a very seasoned person, both professionally and personally on this program. Um, and because we are sort of in like the creation phase of it and learning really what it is and what it can be, um, it's a really, really special time to be involved. So if you are interested, um, please go to our initial inquiry page um, and uh, I'll reach out and we'll chat. Um, the QR code that's on this page takes you to all of the webinars. So if they've already happened, it'll take you a link to watch them if you missed them. If they haven't happened yet, it'll take you to links to register for them. And hopefully we'll see you on a few more Thursdays uh, between now and Thanksgiving. And then I think the last slide is Brittany's contact info. So if you have some follow-up questions on Taskmasters. We have opened up the floor. I think you can raise your hand or request a chat or something if you have questions and you would like um, to ask them now, but I know some of these things can be sort of personal. So if you wanna reach out to Brittany and chat, um, this is her email and you can do so. And uh, nothing but good things to learn about Taskmasters. It's a super exciting program and it's a great fit for everyone. And, and I just really love how it looks at people's uh, you're like, your brain is your superpower. Like what makes you different is what makes you unique to be able to face these things yourself. So like that, I think that at its core is what makes Taskmaster so special is it, it's not a one size fits all program. It is so catered to our individual brains. And it really, I think the empowerment of it comes from these kids feeling like, oh my gosh, I took on my personal mountain and climbed it, not somebody else's mountain, my own. So I'm, I'm loving seeing these opportunities. Um, last bit of business before we go is Anna that's in here. Um, you are receiving our free lunch today. So be on the lookout for um, a gift certificate in your email and we can wait a couple more minutes for questions, but um other than that, you have Brittany's contact info. I hope we see you guys again at another webinar. Um, and please don't ever hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to chat. All right, friends, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye. Happy Halloween. Um, I hope you guys all have safe and fun and sugar-filled Halloweens today. Um, and we will see you next time. Thanks for being here.